Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream. Today is October the 29th. I'm going to do your Just For Today in a meditation. Feel free to reach me at recoveryofhope21 at gmail.com. Let's go ahead and get into our meditation for today. It is entitled Living in the Now. Living just for today relieves the burden of the past and the fear of the future. That is taken from Basic Text, page 94. Thoughts of how bad it was or could be can consume our hopes for recovery. Fantasies of how wonderful it was or could be can divert us from taking action in the real world. That's why in Narcotics Anonymous, we talk about living and recovering just for today. In NA, we know that we can change. We've come to believe that our higher power can restore the soundness of our minds and hearts. The wreckage of our past can be dealt with through the steps. By maintaining our recovery just for today, we can avoid creating problems in the future. Life in recovery is no fantasy. Daydreams of how great using was or how we can use successfully in the future Delusions of how great things could be, overblown expectations that set us up for disappointment and relapse are all stripped of their power by the program. We seek God's will, not our own. We seek to serve others, not ourselves. Our self-centeredness and the importance of how great things could or should be for us disappears. In the light of recovery, we perceive the difference between fantasy and reality. Just for today, I am grateful for the principles of recovery and the new reality they've given me. Wow, let's take a moment of silence followed by the we version of the serenity prayer. Moment of silence now, please. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Please and thank you. Living just for today relieves the burden of the past and the fear of the future. And in the last paragraph, it says that all of these uh, tendencies that we have, right, to fantasize about the future, to uh, be upset about the past, to get into impossible situations where we have these high expectations and inevitably we're going to be disappointed and possibly even relapse. All of that power of that is stripped by the program. Because what happens when we have unrealistic expectations for ourselves and what happens when we resent ourselves, meaning that whatever it is we did in the past, we keep rescinding those circumstances back to ourselves in the form of regret and remorse or anger that we didn't respond a certain way. Uh, we keep rescinding that. And every time we do that, we have to relive that experience and we have to remaster our emotion. And it's like juggling apples. And then you throw a football in the mix. It's going to be very difficult to juggle apples along with a football. And of course, the football is representative of our past mistakes our issues that we had that we we say are the reasons why we use so that we could change um, our perception of what was really going on. Today, we don't have to do that. Today, because of recovery, because of the 12 steps of the program, because of understanding that honesty has different layers, but we must at some point become honest about our disease of addiction 
which reminds me, there's a special point I want to make uh, if, if God gives me the opportunity to bring it up. So all of these things can cause us to be delusional, if you will. And being delusional is not conducive to not using drugs or recovery. And I want to make sure that we understand the stopping and the not using is a great thing. And it is a foundational piece to recovery. But not using, that alone, that alone will bring some benefits. But it does not guarantee that you will recover. It does not guarantee that you will recover. Because there are some things that you have to change. And the only way that you're going to change them now that you're not using is if you look them squarely in the face and understand what they even were. What were the patterns that you were involved in that you need to change so that you can be in a position where now when it comes up, the urge or the impulse comes up, you don't have to respond to that. And when you look at it from the point of view, and I'm using you generally speaking, right? But when I look at it from the point of view that, okay, I caught you this time. <laughs> I caught the thought this time. I caught that stinking thinking this time. And instead of going with it, I'm going to resist it and apply the spiritual principles of the program. When I do that, I get to change the trajectory of my life. Some people come into the program and they say, I might as well use if I'm going to live like this. Well, I'm not going to say you might as well use if you're going to live like this, but why would you spend three, four years here and keep doing the same things minus the drugs? The drugs made it a bit easier for you to manage that. Now, you, you're not changing your perception of your reality and it's killing you, it's paining you to have to see it for what it really is, that you are choosing a lifestyle with or without the drugs. But you're sitting in a program that has all of the tools that you possibly could want. And for religious people, it even has the ability for you to choose a higher power of your own understanding. For the atheist and the agnostic, it even has the ability for you to not choose one. So if I get to choose, then I also get not to choose. It's up to you. If you're not thriving, if you are not thriving and every day you are angry and bitter and frustrated and you're not thriving, you're surrounded by the same things that you were surrounded by when you were using and you're accepting all of that. It's no one's fault but your own. It's my fault. If I continue to let the same things that were going on when I was using, the same behaviors that I had, the same friends, to have power in my life. I, I like to say this all the time. You get nothing if you did not get it when I was using. Honey child, please, why would I in my right mind, non-delusional, able to look at the, the reality of things? And that doesn't mean that my perception is always right. But I guarantee you, it is more right than it ever was when I was using. I still need to run things by my sponsor. I still need to talk to my network, right? I still need to do those things. <laughs> oh, man. Recovery is beautiful. And it works if you work it. But if you don't, it just won't be working for you. You'll be hanging out with people in recovery and you'll be so angry. You'll always be in a position where you're comparing yourself to them, their outsides rather, because you think that they've attained so much. But 
they probably have done the same level of work that is recommended for all of us. Get clean, get in here, roll your sleeves up and do the work. The sooner you do it, the more free you'll feel. But the the whole point is, is that I get to live in the here and now free. I don't have to have anything have power over me. And if I let it, it's, it should be by choice. Not because I don't know what I'm being pushed around and don't know how to respond. <laughs> no, that's not, that's not what's going on here. If I let something have power over me, it should be because I'm looking it squarely in the face and deciding that this is of good virtue. The days of letting people shame you and guilt trip you and push you and bully you and talk down to you in a condescending manner, um, put you in awful predicaments that they know challenges your recovery. Those days are over for us because we are no longer the same individual. And if we are the same individual that we were when we were using, today is the greatest day to change that. Today, be grateful for the principles of recovery and the new reality that recovery has given you. And by doing that, it has it should have some fruit. It should be something that is easily viewable, um, observable. It should be something that you can see, that you can look at, and you can kind of have a measurement from how you were back then to how you are today, right? It's not that complicated. It's not that complicated. It does take some work. And it's going to challenge your spirituality. But spirituality can be developed. No matter where you're at, how well you think you're doing spiritually, you can always grow more. And if you think you're doing pretty good spiritually, there I guarantee you, if we keep it 100, there are areas in your life that you can do better. We're looking for progress, not perfection. But we never want to get to a point where we reach a plateau and say, I've done enough. It's too much work out here. Too many people to be able to serve it. Too much work. Too many hungry individuals, hurting individuals. Too many addicts still dying from the disease of addiction. There are too many places that we still need to be able to get our message into. H&I is a perfect place if you have the clean time requirement. H&I is a perfect uh, place to get involved in Narcotics Anonymous. Hospitals and institutions taking our message in to people that cannot come out and get it. So that maybe when they do release from the hospitals or they do come out of prison, hopefully maybe they will find a meeting the first opportunity that they can and have a chance, have a chance on not repeating the same old past that they've always, always lived. Okay, well, I've enjoyed talking to you today and I will be talking.